here we are at exercise eight and we're going to be looking at tonal ranges now and specifically rebuilding tonal ranges so i'm going to be talking a little bit about what uh, what the tonal ranges are and how we can use them to um to make our image pop a bit and to highlight the areas of the image that we really want so we take a look at the second clip here in the timeline at the moment You see a couple of a couple of things with it. I mean, one. Let's let's take a quick look into the primary. Um, one is that it's exceedingly um, towards the warm area of the spectrum there. So it's um, all about the oranges, yellows, and reds. Mainly the oranges. Just have a little look there. And the other thing we can see here is that it the the face it's uh, especially is very very flat. Um, there's a load of color data in there. There's a lot of saturation in there, as we can again see from the um, vector scope. But there's really not an equivalent amount of lumer information, which is giving us this this really sort of weird flat look, especially over the skin. Everything looks uh, quite strange. So if I just desaturate this completely, you can see a bit better what I'm talking about. See, it's all this um, middle grey area. Let's just focus just on the skin there. And we take a look now. Pretty much everything here is going between the, the 20 and 70. Probably on the skin, it's not even, not even as, uh, as much as that. Yes, the skin itself is maybe going between 20 and 60. And that's including the, the catch lights in the eyes here. Okay, so we want to make the, um, make the face pop out a little bit more. Uh, should I keep the saturation? No, I'll, I'll turn the saturation back to where it was so we can see what's going on a bit better. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just take a, a very in-depth look at the Luma curve here. We've used it in pretty much all of the uh, exercises up to now, but we haven't really dug too uh, deep into it. So the, the Luma curve, I mean, like, like all of these curves here, they're basically a, a way of, of remapping and stretching or compressing ranges of either color channels, in the case of red, green, and blue, or the luminance channel here. So what we've got running at the bottom is our input. So it goes from zero to one on the a zero to one scale or a zero to 1023 on a 10-bit scale, whatever, you, however you want to think about it, or zero to 255 on an 8-bit scale, however you want to, uh, you feel most comfortable with that. So that's the input here. So this is this is where our uh, our values are going in, and this along the vertical is the output. So this is the values that we're taking out. So at the moment we've got two points. First point is in the bottom left hand corner. So we've got an input of zero, and an output of zero. So if I lift this up, this is boosting all of this up to well, let's say boost it into the middle. And I'll use um, 8 bit numbers just for the sake of ease. So now instead of the input is now 0, and it's mapping all of those output values now to um, 1, 2, 8. So right in the center. And the rest of the range here is compressed uh, in the same way. So our other point here is at um, 1 and 1, so absolute white. And our absolute black is now middle gray so it's it's compressed all of the other ranges inside there um and it, it we work along just in in various ranges so i like to sort of break the uh, or think about breaking the uh, the curve into into various ranges